Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is episode 87, I think, of my brand new comics haul series. This is a series where each and every week, when I grab my new haul from the local comic shop, every week I show you guys what I got, uh, and I tell you a little bit about every single issue. So we're sticking with the unedited format. Just for now, I think I'm gonna be able to use some editing software soon. I don't have any excuses at this point, guys. I know it's been like a month since I last did one of these edited hauls. To be honest, I've just had a lot of fun experimenting um, with this format, just you know, one take showing the artwork. So I appreciate all of you guys for still sticking around. Let's get right into it though. I already gave away this hardcover that's at the bottom here. Can't do anything about the spine, but um, I'll show you guys that at the end. I've got seven single issues though uh, from Marvel, Boom Studios, and Image. And uh, let's just go over Marvel first, a pretty big haul. The first issue that I picked up this week though is Fantastic Four number one. So we've got a new ongoing Fantastic Four series from Marvel. Dan Slott's run, uh, who was the previous writer, he just wrapped up his run a couple months ago with number, I think, 46 uh, of that run. I was a really, really big fan of Dan Slott's run, so uh, the new writer, Ryan North, is really going to have to one-up him uh, for this to be a run that I'll enjoy. I'll stick through it, though. I've heard that this first issue only focuses on Ben and Alicia, um, and maybe there are two kids that they've recently adopted in Dan Slott's Fantastic Four run. So there have been a lot of changes that happened to Marvel's first family uh, in Slott's run, and I'll be interested to see what this new creative team does with it. The art in here is looking pretty uh, smooth, actually, to be honest. This is by uh, Iban Coelho is his name. So the first few issues of this, from what we've seen solicited so far, are going to be focusing on like individual members of the team, which is a really weird way to start a Fantastic Four book. But I've heard good things about how it's written. I will hopefully be putting out a review of this single issue. Um, either today or tomorrow we'll see if I get around to it but yeah if you want to review let me know Fantastic Four number one Alex Ross cover looking really nice there so I'm excited to get into this new ongoing series next up though let's continue on with Marvel I've got kind of a one shot that's wrapping up a big event that just ended this is Judgment Day Omega so weird looking cover it's only the Eternals that are getting thrown into a pit um, by a bunch of human protesters I think those might be so I don't want to get into the spoilers about Judgment Day um, number six and that whole ending that happened a couple weeks ago. So I won't talk too much about this, but let's show some of the interior artwork here. Uh, I really like the Judgment Day event as a whole, and I've heard that this issue doesn't have too much to do with any ramifications. I mean, you know, it's dealing with the aftermath, but I've heard it's not really necessary reading. Here's some more interior artwork. We've got those text pages, because uh, this is by Kieran Gillen. He likes putting a lot of words into his comics. That's not my favorite thing about his writing style. But this whole concept with like the celestial progenitor giving the Earth um, either a thumbs up or a thumbs down and judging them, then trying to destroy them. I thought Judgment Day as a whole was a really well done event, um, and not too many people were talking about it. You know, like it was a big deal, but like compared to other Marvel events, I'd say this went a little bit under the radar. So I do recommend it, especially just because some really big stuff ended up happening by the end of it. That's Judgment Day Omega number one. Next up here, though, we've got two different Spider-Man titles, so I'll go over these kind of at the same time here. The first one, though, this is Spider-Man number two, so speaking of Dan Slott, this is the title that he took over uh, after he left Fantastic Four, right? We've got Dan Slott and Mark Bagley on a new ongoing Spider-Man title, and this is End of the Spider-Verse Part 2. So Part 1, I really enjoyed. I did do a single issue review of that one, uh, if you want to check out my non-spoiler thoughts on it. But we've got this new villain, um, not a spoiler because she's on the cover, but this is Shathra. I guess she's not a new villain, actually. She's been around for a while, some people in the comments were saying. But uh, a new kind of end of the Spider-Verse type event. We've had uh, the, ori the original Spider-Verse. We had Spider-Geddon. This is kind of like the third in a trilogy, right? It's only taking place in Spider-Man, though, so not quite as big a deal. But that first issue is really well done. That's Spider-Man number two. But we also got the other main Peter Parker Spider-Man title released today. They messed up the release schedules or something. You'd think those two titles would be coming out like every other week from each other or something. But um, ASM number 13, I'm liking this Hobgoblin story arc they're doing. Uh, to be honest, I've enjoyed it. I don't know too much about Hobgoblin history, but they do fill you in uh, pretty well in everything you do need to know. We've got John Romita Jr. on the artwork doing the cover here and the interior, and Zeb Wells is the ongoing writer on here. Whoa, okay, that's an awesome splash there. I think this is the new Norman Osborn gold goblin suit. Um, he's getting like his own spin-off miniseries out of this and this is all leading into Dark Web Which is this big um, Event that's starting up next month actually so big X-Men like Spider-Man crossover They're doing with a bunch of tie-ins. It's gonna be Marvel's main event. I'm pretty sure so uh, we'll see how this leads into that I can't show you this page. That's a big spoiler But yeah, you can see number 14 is gonna be kind of a prelude issue to Dark Web and There's like a Venom tie-in that came out this week that's leading into it also so if you're into Venom, if you're into X-Men and Spider-Man, that's going to be for you. I'll probably just pick up the main uh, tie-ins, like from Amazing Spider-Man and the main title, I guess. 
Last one from Marvel, though. This is Moon Knight number 17, one of my favorite ongoing Marvel series, if not my favorite. I enjoy each issue because they give you kind of a self-contained story, um, and then they also give you the plot progression in the background. I would say, though, that that was more the case for, like, the first 12 issues or so, like, the first year of the series. Lately, the issues have been a little bit more coherent with each other, but a few days ago, I, I read number 16 and the annual back-to-back, -back, and I do recommend that annual also that was uh, featuring Werewolf by Night. This one, though, uh, is dealing with these two mercenaries um, who are hired by the vampire kind of like crime lord that Moon Knight is going after in this new arc. Jed McKay is the writer here. He's really making a name for himself with this series. And the art is my favorite part, which is by Alessandro Capuccio, who I wasn't familiar with before this series. Yeah, you can see how uh, Moon Knight shines off the page. Wow, that's some great looking artwork. So excited to read this. Moon Knight, it's pretty deep into it, so I don't think too many people are talking about it anymore, but I still do recommend this. It's um, a good series. You can probably hop in at like number 13 and you won't be too lost. So Moon Knight is pretty good so far. Just a couple more single issues though. I know this is a really big haul, so this video is a little bit longer than my usual. But um, this next one, I decided to get kind of last minute off of the shelf. I saw a couple of people saying this is their pick of the week who are already reviewing comics today. This is Specs number one uh, from Boom Studios. I really can't tell you guys too much about this, but I'll show some of the artwork. I think this might have something to do with like these glasses that some teenagers uh, receive in the mail like people used to, you know, like decades ago. So it's probably set in like the 80s or 90s, something like that. Um, and it has something to do with granting them wishes, so, you know, it's always good to try out new stuff from Boom Studios. You never know what's going to be the next something that's killing the children, right? That's what everyone likes to say. So, specs number one. If you want to see a review of this one, also let me know. I've heard some good things, but, uh, it might be kind of going under the radar, so I'll let you know if you guys, I'll let you guys know if I recommend this one. The last single issue, though, that I picked up, this is Dark Ride number two. I grabbed this one off the shelf, so I wasn't able to get cover A, uh, but it doesn't matter too much. This is a pretty nice looking cover here, and that first issue is a big recommendation from me. It's basically this story about this um, demonic theme park that was founded by this guy about a hundred years ago. Um, there's some really big fans of it, and one of them comes to work at the park, and that first issue followed his first day where he met um, kind of like the children of the creator of the park. They're both like celebrities um, in their own rights for different reasons, and it's just getting into like the nitty gritties of like what's actually going on behind in the background. So still a lot of mystery to be unfolded in here, but I'm excited to get into it. Joshua Williamson writing this, first title I've ever read by him, but um, he's a big writer at DC, so if any of you guys read DC, you know who he is. Dark Ride number two, I do recommend the first issue of that one, but we'll see how it continues to be. All right, uh, I'm getting pretty late into the video here. I just want to quickly go over this. I did pick up this hardcover. I got it for free with my uh, store points, which I'm excited to have it. I was wondering how I was going like, to get my hands on this. I also did a like overview and unwrapping of the first volume of this, uh, but this is Gideon Falls, book two, uh, The Eater of All Things. So basically, this is like the complete collection of Gideon Falls. They were able to put them into two different hardcovers. Uh, I think I have it on the shelf over here. Yeah, here's the first one. So I actually haven't gotten around to reading Gideon Falls yet, but this first hardcover collects issues one through 16. And then the second one that just came out this week that I was able to get uh, is 17 through 21, if you can see down there on the bottom. So I'm excited to get into Gideon Falls. I've only read the first couple issues of this series, so I can't give you guys too much of an opinion or anything like that on it. If you've read it, though, I'm curious to know what you think down in the comments section below. It's Jeff Lemire writing it, um, and he's definitely been a pretty big writer over the last couple years, especially with like horror indie stuff. That's about it for this week's comic haul, though. I appreciate you guys still sticking around for the non-edited version. I've been having fun experimenting with this, but don't worry. I think next week I should be able to edit uh, with a new editing software, and we'll see how that goes. But I do appreciate all of you guys for watching. If you want to show a little bit more support to the channel, you can also hit the subscribe button down below. And let me know what you guys picked up this week also. Which books are you looking forward to the most? There's a lot of different new number ones coming out from a bunch of different publishers, so if you guys are reading any of them, what are you looking forward to? Let me know all that good stuff down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.